Day 11. Time approximately 15 a.m. Location, Solaris Stable, Big 52, S.C. Branch. Get out of my stable now! Solaris's voice thundered through the corridors of the underground complex like a wave crashing on the shore. The order came from every speaker and every operative sentry patrolling the abandoned halls. Puppy sat down on a floor tile, making sure that it was the white one. You know, since the black ones were still bottomless pits. You couldn't let the adults get in the way of playtime all the time. Why? Because you've already caused enough trouble, you malfunctioning little drone! Puppy frowned. I'm not a throne. Don't try to sit on me, stupid voice. Drone means robot. You don't even have a decent integrated dictionary. Your uselessness makes my subroutines reboot. Now, that was too much. Puppy stood up and looked at the sentinel in front of her with a really, really angry stare. But the best she could manage had the same effect as putting on a military helmet on the head of a plushie. Scarier? No. Cuter. Hey! I'm not a robot. Miss Creepy Voice told me, and Mr. Questioner and Henry, so that's one against... I... Uh, numbers. Why was everything always having to end with numbers? Against a lot of us. How many wrongs put together does not become true of Shia Magic, Device 18? Even now, every sensor analyzing you gives me the same result as before. You are a suit filled with the remains of a corpse, mostly broken bones, and a large amount of gelatinous substance. There is no scientific studies confirming the existence of a fabled marshmallow pony. Ergo, you are a crazed machine filled with goo and bones. Puppy raised a hoof, pointing at the sentry. Stop being smart, Blue. Or else, I'll have to show you who's who again, a, a, a super dangerous egghead here. I don't think there will be any doubt about that, D-18. Now, I must ask you to leave this place, and let me contemplate these empty halls until forever. But I can't go away. I have things to do. Soros's voice paused for a moment before replying. And what exactly must you do here? Puppy frowned, trying to remember. Why did she have to explain things to stupid Mr. Blue? She wanted to play Indiana Mares. I have to find the glass balls or Mr. Ugly Gold won't tell me where Mom is. Can I have the glass balls? Puppy, please? So, you're here to scavenge this place, destroy my hard work in Sun City wasn't enough? First, you trash my utopia, and now you come to my place of eternal rest to rob me? I am not giving you anything more than the last chance to leave. But, but I really need to find my mom. If you give it to me, I'll give you something to, something, it's, it's like bartering or something, like the big ponies do. The filly looked into her bags, trying to find something useful for the ghost voice. You do not have a mom. You are a robot. Your insistence is futile and bound to fail, like your logical matrix. That... that was mean. And a lie. Mom was just somewhere else. Puppy had heard the registrations and seen the mural. Mom was leaving messages for her. Blue voice was a bad voice, and Puppy didn't want to hear his lies anymore. Music! The radio inside Puppy's helmet started to play music to cover Solaris's voice. Even if you are mistaking some female pony as a motherly figure, your firmware is more than 200 years old. At this time, your mother is certainly dead. Louder! Even outside the helmet, it was possible to hear DJ Lonesome Pony talking about the dangers of radiation and taint. So, you are trying to ignore me. You could simply turn on your tail and leave the way you came, pony. Louder! The volume of the music inside Puppy's helmet rose until the computer's voice became only a muffled, unintelligible sound in the background. You're not going away, are you? The filly didn't reply, sitting stubbornly on her white floor tile. The noise from the radio was so loud it was clearly audible even several meters away from her. 
And this is why you should always remember to bring some pure water. And at least a couple rat away and a rat X. Now, the public complaints about good old Los and Pony's music choices. I was told that my music is too sissy. And at this point, a bad DJ would have said that he decides what goes on in his radio. But I'm a worse DJ, so I give you what you asked for. And just that. Get 11 minutes of the horse with the end. Let's see you criticize my choices again. Then I have no choice but to remove you with lethal force. The sentinel's visor turned red again, and it immediately opened fire on Puppy with both of its weapons. The spray of bullets coming from less than a couple meters tore into the filly's chest, repainting the walls and floor with a plink slime. Puppy staggered and tried to get to her hooves, but a large part of her torso was peppered ruin, making her stumble and fall with her muzzle to the ground. Propping herself against a wall was with her only good foreleg. The filly opened her mouth to protest, but a second hail of bullets struck her helmet. The first hits bounced against the curved glass, but it didn't last long, and the whole sphere exploded in a rain of shiny crystals. Puppy's head had a hole in its eye, an ear missing, and it was possible to look through the wounds in her neck. Nevertheless, she was still able to speak. Rock! I see you are highly resistant to external damage. Change of tactics. Aim for the talismans. While the Rock of Destiny was fluctuating in front of Puppy, the Sentinel took aim and shot three bullets, hitting the suit behind her neck, in the lower belly and on her left flank, approximately where the pony's cutie mark would be. The foal froze for a couple of seconds, as if the hits paralyzed her in the pose of trying to take her weapon. But almost immediately she moved again, grabbing the stone with her wounded hoof. Mom doesn't want me to break other ponies' toys, Mr. Blue. But if you keep using them to tease me, I'll break yours, even if I'm going to be sorry about it. Puppy looked down at her single remaining eye, sighing with frustration. Look what you made me do! You made me step on a black tile! I've lost the game, dumb bully bot! I must concede you this. I've never seen a drone with such resilience. Say goodbye to your power source. Another couple of well-aimed shots hit the filly between the saddlebags and her sides. The radio crackled for a moment, seemingly dying, but it kept singing the song at a slightly lower volume. This is not working as intended. You have no processors nor power. You should stop functioning. Please obey at least the laws of physics and stop functioning. Puppy stomped a hoof against the wall while slowly moving towards the sentinel. Her exonerable advance revealing that she had merely been slowed down by the massive damage she'd received. The pink stains on the wall seemed to evaporate and flow back towards the foal, and the missing parts of her face had already begun to reform. As if some pony were drying it with a crayon. This regeneration didn't involve muscle regrowth or bones mending. Simply color and lines filling over the holes. Stop that! I'm not doing anything wrong! Why do you tease me? I'm really, really trying to be your friend, even if you're being a big stinker and a bug. What are you? The corridors were flooded with bright green light. Briefly, everything around her in a faint green glow. Oh, I see now. I was using the wrong weaponry. The sentinel rapidly retreated down the corridor. As the last of Puppy's remaining parts finished reforming and the suit began to repair its own damage. Why was the bully bot going away now? Puppy had to find those balls. She needed some pony to show her where they were. The filly launched herself into a gallop, trying not to lose the century. Wait! I'm sorry. I didn't want to call you a bug. Please don't leave me alone. I need those balls! Puppy entered a large hall filled with catwalks hanging from the ceiling, sealing the floor with the tables and... At every table sat dead ponies, and their skeletons were amassed next to the door that led to the stable exit. I'll give you all my pretty toys, please. From the other side of the mess hall, a second, slightly larger sentry appeared carrying a single weapon. A large barrel, more than two meters long, that crackled with blue energy. Maybe magic will do the trick. The gun shot, releasing a large beam of magic that completely enveloped Puppy in its cobalt light. The filly stood for a moment, 
her large eyes losing their unnatural pink. She tried to open her mouth to say something, but all she could do was fall down to the floor. Everything became black. Every problem seemed so distant. Mom, the ugly ghoul. Why was she even bothering? Puppy couldn't remember. Everything was so... cold. All she wanted to do was just rest for a moment. She was so sleepy. Who was she, anyway? The music slowly died until it was impossible to hear the song. All the lights in the helmet's HUD fading away completely. Day. Non-applicable. Time. Non-applicable. Location. Non-applicable. So, puppy, this is the end. This is where we give up. The frilly curl even tighter on herself. She didn't want to listen now. She only wanted to stay like that, in the dark. Finally, she didn't have to think about how far Mom was and how hard it was to walk so much road every day only to find another place where she wasn't. Besides, Mr. Blue was too strong. He had big bully bots that hurt her so much that she couldn't even stand up. So, why should she just get up again just to get another spanking? It made no sense. It was so much better to lie down and stay put. It was so much better and less painful. I don't think you really want to stop here. You didn't achieve anything. Your mother's still out there, and that Mr. Blue cheated to win. Why should you let a cheater win? It was not that puppy let Mr. Blue win. She simply didn't want to play anymore. That was all. Because puppy knew that cheaters never win. It could have been wrong if a cheater won. Puppy told her many times. Ponies are nice, pretty, and never mean. Cheaters and evildoers never win in the end, because that's not the pony way to do things. You have to love and tolerate. So, you'll love and tolerate this cheater and let him go on like this? I understand. But what if some pony else, not you, came and showed this cheater that he can't win like this? Let's say, just to give him a lesson? Puppy didn't know. For sure, Mr. Blue needed to learn something about friendship. Maybe if some pony was going to show him what, that cheating was not the way to make friends, he would change and become less of a meanie. Maybe this way Puppy could talk with him again and make that barter. Have those glass balls and find Mom? It, it'd be fantastic. But who could win against those bully bots with the big hurdy light? Puppy didn't know any pony strong enough to... Oh, maybe you do, little one. Open your eyes and leave the rest to me. Day 11. Time. Approximately 12.30 a.m. Location. Solaris Stable. Big 52 SC Branch. Puppy's eyes opened wide, flaring with dark blue flames as she got to her hooves once again. Guess who's back? Bully bot boy. The filly's voice was different, as if it came from afar, echoing through a long cave. I must have made a miscalculation. A single charge wasn't enough. Please, have another. The sentry bot aimed with its crystal cannon, taking aim at puppy while the large barrel crackled with blue light. The filly waved a hoof dismissively, sporting an amused smile on her muzzle. Nah. I'm okay. I'm telling, trying to lose some weight. One of the catwalks was enveloped in a dark halo that attached itself from the ceiling, striking the sentry like a gigantic arrow that cut the robot in two. Wow, that was cool. How'd you do that? Can I do it too? Huh? Huh? Solus's voice boomed in the hall. You think a simple magic trick is going to suffice to impress me? Think again. I have a full army down here. Creepy Pup snickered. And that's exactly what I'm going. Get ready for a spanking. Initiating lockdown procedure. Closing blast doors. Activating security system. Residential area on red alert. Research area on red alert. Warehouses from 1 to 12 on red alert. Workshop on red alert. While well, the voice announced the status of various sections of the base, a dozen sentry guns popped up from the ceiling and started firing at the little filly in the middle of the hall. Yeah, whatever. The foal trotted towards the remains of the destroyed sentry bot, finding that the door behind it was shut. 
It was a heavy security door, with the usual signs warning against danger depicted on it. The sentry guns kept peppering Creepy Pup with a swarm of bullets, piercing the suit almost everywhere. This let the cloud out, a thick pink curtain of smoke filled with thin blue wandering lines that danced inside of it, giving it a form, giving it strength. So, I totally mustn't go down here. I always loathe orders. The pink cloud slammed itself against the door, apparently doing nothing, until, with a loud metallic screech, the heavy bulkhead began moving with a rain of sparks. An intricate network of blue lines drew strange menanders across the door while it was dragged open, crushing the plungers that should have kept it in place. That was awesome! Show him some girl power! Creepy voice, yay! Immediately behind the door, three sentries armed with energy cannons were waiting, already in firing position. Checkmate! Solaris's voice disappeared in the roar of the three weapons. The rays hid the blast door as it slammed shut again. Black tendrils ran down the corridor, enveloping the robots and making their weapons fizzle and explode in a blue sphere. The door opened again. You are just a magical anomaly. Why don't you just give up and disappear? Mistakes like you need to be corrected! Creepy Pup snickered. Yeah, sure. Corrected by an egomaniac that kills foals. I think the one in need of a lesson here is you, not me. Tell him that he stinks! Oh, and tell him he's a bug! Oh, please, puppy, I'm trying to work here. Snorted Creepy Pup with an annoyed expression. You have your methods, and I have mine, all right? It's called personal space. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. I'll just sit here and watch, I guess. Good girl. Now then, where were we? All right, taking some cold, shiny, metallic plot. Here we go. The evil kindergarten creature trotted up to the second blast door that resisted for about the same amount of time as the first had. Warning. Intruder in the engineering area. Activate heavy defenses. Solaris's voice interrupted the automatic message. You could be a quite powerful entity, but you still have to face Solaris Inc.'s real power anomaly. Creepy Pup frowned, trying to seem offended. Hey, didn't you hear the filly before? I'm a pony. The creature snickered. Yeah, I'd better leave that line for the little one. Oh look! Larger robots! Should I be scared? Indeed! Are you familiar with the concept of a railgun? A large robot as tall as the main battle tank appeared in the corridor. It sported quite a number of weapons. But they were all dwarfed by the massive cannon mounted on its left side. It exploits the same principles used on the Pronimedes project. The nightmarish filly yawned, trotting along the corridor as if the robot wasn't there. You're not even trying, are you? Look, I'll stay here all day and wait for you to gather some friends and make a real attempt. But I have an agenda. With a simple wave of her hoof, the sentinel was sent against the wall, upside down. Wah! Will you teach me how to do that thing with the hoof? I can only make stones come and go. Half a dozen turrets showered Creepy Pup with various calibers of bullets when she crossed the workshop, heading for the mainframe room. The attacks didn't even slow her, simply thickening the pink cloud that followed the pony everywhere. A full stop for a moment, an evil grin depicted upon her muzzle. Don't you feel that something's... missing? I mean, if I'm going to do this, I should at least do it by the book? Dark blue tendrils wormed through the pink cloud that surrounded Creepy Pup, sculpting the shapeless mass and stretching it between two frameworks of magic. At first, their form was vague. But then they quickly gained definition, becoming a pair of vast, bat-like wings that looked disturbingly like they'd been woven from cotton candy. Ah, uh, are those wings? Are we gonna fly? We are not gonna fly, right? Creepy Pup snorted. Well, duh. What do you think wings are for? The blast door that protected the mainframe creaked and bent until it gave up, opening like its siblings. The room consisted of a large circular pit, at least 30 meters deep, 
that surrounded a large pillar of weird-looking machinery. The entrance was at the top of the pit, and headed to a narrow catwalk running along the walls of the room. A ladder on the opposite side of the entrance led to a second catwalk, about six meters under the first one. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I don't want to fly. It's scary. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not cool. Not cool at all. The blue flames in Puppy's eyes flickered while she face-hoofed. Look, I know quite well what I'm doing. Couldn't you just let me finish this thing, then we'll talk? Uh, maybe. No wings? Creepypup raised her who was at the ceiling in exasperation. All right, all right, no wings. The leathery wings disappeared, reverting to a simple curtain of pink mist. See? Happy now? Yush! Thank you very much, Miss Creepy Voice. It's not that I'm scared of wings, you know, it's just that, uh, I have no dresses that put them up. Yeah, no dresses that fit. That's it. Whatever. Now let's say goodbye to this Mr. Blue. The little pony looked down the stairs and sighed. I can't believe this. Slowly, she began climbing the ladders downstairs. One done, five to go. Wait! Solaris's voice boomed from the loudspeaker. I think it's time to discuss a truce. You should have done that before, big guy. This'll teach you what happens when you're putting yourself against mysterious otherworldly powers. Baby Pup paused for a moment in the middle of the ladder. No, wait, this won't teach you anything. I'm removing you from the equation. I should have predicted this. I lost. Yep, too bad. Sucks to be you. Yay, he admitted it. Ah, uh, now do the victory dance. It's like the puppy dance, but you have to sing, Ah, 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 ah who's the best? I'm the best, while you do it. Yeah, we'll do the victory dance when I'm finished with him. Creepy Pup started climbing down to the third floor. What? But we already won. More or less. Sometimes winning's not enough. Crushing your enemies completely will spare you trouble later. Trust me. But, hey, 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 wait. We're not going to bully some pony who said he's sorry. Creepy Pup stopped on the walkway, sighing. But you did the same thing in Sun City. He said he was sorry, and you detonated that shell anyway. That was different. That thing destroyed the only bully bots. Mr. Blue is not a bully bot, you silly filly. He's a whiny bot. Please tell me you're not serious. No. Wait, you are. Very well, little Miss Imbecile. This time, we'll make sure he won't shoot us again with magic. But he said he's sorry. He won't do it again. Yeah, sure. But we want to just be a little more certain about that, don't we? It's a machine, anyway. It's not like it's going to... Anybody's going to get hurt. Mr. and Mrs. Voice... Mr. and Mr. Voice are robots, and Questioner's a robot, and they're all my friends. Voices are not just... Big toys to play with. They can be pretty and nice, too, if you want a friend with them. Ah, uh, but maybe you don't want to be his friend? Why do we have to befriend an egomaniac control freak? Alright, enough fancy talk. If you don't want to be his friend, I want my turn. Yeah, sure. As if you could break a possession like this. Puppy's eyes became pink and she looked around, trying to find a screen or something that seemed like it was Mr. Blue's face. Oh, hi. Excuse my friend. She can be a bit, uh, <clears throat> grumpy. Wow, this was weird. Puppy couldn't describe how she felt or where she was while she let Creepy Voice do her little show. But if she had to describe it, it would be a little like when you let someone play with one of your toys and you looked at how she's using it. You know, not because you didn't trust her, just because if she breaks the toy, then Mom will be upset and you'll have one less toy. And Puppy didn't have a lot of spacesuits. Taking it back was easy, really. After all, it was Puppy's spacesuit. Why shouldn't she have it back if she wanted it? It was obvious that the little filly didn't even counter, and consider the fact that breaking a demonic possession involves high-level magic and large rainbow blasts. If you're finished quarreling with yourself, could you please explain to me what's going on? Solaris interrupted, Puppy's thinking, bringing her back to reality. 
Uh, sure. What do you want to know, Mr. Blue? The filly smiled broadly and sat down to stare at the tower occupying the middle of the pit, since there wasn't anything better to talk with. Can you just tell me what happened? Yeah. Creepy voice helped me show you that cheating is the right, wrong way to win a game. Then you said that you had lost and you seemed sorry. So I told her to make a victory dance and she wanted to bully you. So I made her stop. Oh, right. I was almost forgetting. Puppy started wiggling her flanks in front of Solus, singing, Ha 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 Who's the best? I'm the best! And just to be sure that the message was properly received, Fifole stuck out her tongue. Blah! Yes, very funny, really. Excuse me if I don't laugh. Solus paused for a moment. So what now? Are you finally going to go away? Puppy tapped her helmet as if it was her chin, thinking. Ah, uh, I think I had something to do still. Mr. Voice, what are we doing down here? Actual primary objective on the list. Rolling memories. Objective. Receive at least six memory orbs from the research area of the Solaris stable. Puppy nodded wisely. All right, the glass balls. Ah, uh, Mr. Blue, now that we're friends, can I have the glass balls? Puppy, please? We are not friends, you're an intruder, and you must be removed. But since you seem to have the upper hoof, I will negotiate. If you will do a little chore for me, you will have free access to the research area and will be allowed to take anything you want. Is that acceptable? Puppy frowned. Chores. What a terrible word. Ah, uh, I don't know. Do I have to prepare the dinner table or take out the trash bin? Absolutely not. I don't even know how you would think of such a thing. You will reach an abandoned, infested, and morally dangerous area of the stable and reactivate a communication center. When you are done, come back here and I'll guide you to the research area. The filly in yellow nodded enthusiastically. Yay! I love pushing buttons! It's easy! Good. Now that that's settled, listen carefully. Day, N-A. Time, N-A. Location, N-A. Creepy voice settled down again in the recesses of Puppy's mind. She knew exactly where she failed. She'd been impatient. After 200 years of waiting, impatience spoiled her victory. The fool was losing faith, letting herself slip away. So the voice tried to feed on her desperation. But in her hurry, she made the mistake of giving Puppy hope. Hope for a better solution. Hope of making a new friend. Instead of feeding on Puppy's desperation, she fed Puppy's force will. And then the foal didn't need her anymore. She was strong enough to break the domination. But the nightmarish creature wouldn't stop the first time. Not with so precious a prey in her claws. The foal had big hopes. So big that they could actually keep her power at bay. But what could happen the day that those hopes crashed? The bigger you are, the harder you fall. It's just a matter of time. The little pony was drawing near the end of the road, and the voice would be there, waiting for her. Day 11. Time. Approximately 3 a.m. Location. Solaris Stable. Big 52 SC Branch. Warning. 18 hostiles detected. Threat level. Beyond deadly. Immediate retreat is advised. The three paradors cowered in the room's corner, biting each other in frenzied terror. Puppy gave up trying to catch and pet one of the big ones because they were too fast. Now she was looking for the little ones, but even those jumped and rolled away, even hurting themselves rather than letting Puppy catch them. Ah, but what's wrong with all the pretty pony or puppies? A pet's supposed to be all yappy and soft, not running everywhere like a, a, a crazed pet. Several skeletons of ponies and the remains of a lot of robots lay in the communication room, as is usually inside solar structures. The room was located in a high place, in this case the vertical wall of a mesa, from where it was possible to see Rust Manor, very far in the distance. Over the years, one of the reinforced windows had fallen out and the whole place was the Parador Nest. Paradors were mutated parasprites that developed a large array of predatory features, 
like a bigger body, long teeth that secreted a very corrosive and toxic substance, and totally aggressive attitude. Peridors are also pastel-colored, with large butterfly wings that made them look to puppy's eyes as big, celestial-tier, cute, living plushies. The little pony had completely forgotten her mission and had been chasing the fearsome predators inside their nest for more than an hour. With very little success, since it seemed the animals were scared of her to the point of a couple very young creatures accidentally launching themselves down the mesa rather than letting her draw near. Puppy snorted in frustration. I just wanted to play with you! Ah! Singing, the filly went to the various control panels, trying to find the correct one that made the whole room start again. Just like Mr. Blue had asked her to. Ah. Uh, red button, red button. Why do they always hide the important things? Hey, Mr. Voice, where's the stupid button? Scanning. Startup, relay, localization. Setting objective on the compass. Puppy reached a switch on the wall, and after several attempts, succeeded in pressing it. The room's lights turned on, and some of the screens came to life, showing long lines of blue text. Puppy frowned. Pink was better. But if it was Mr. Blue's home, she had to be polite and go for the blue. All right, all done. Now I can... Oh my gosh, I can't believe it! Puppy's eyes locked on a small parador, lying on the ground, immobile. A pretty butterfly doesn't run away. The fool trotted to the parador, picking it up in her hooves and looking at it in glee. I'll keep you, and I'll hug you, and I'll love you forever. Analyzing. Dead parador cub. Threat level. None. And I'll call you Fuzzy Ball. Are you happy? Puppy threw the dead creature in the air, catching it again when it came down. Yes, you're happy. Who's mommy's love? You're mommy's love. Advising. Picking up dead animals is not hygienic. Puppy put the dead creature on her back and waved a hoof. Don't be jelly, Mr. Voice. I love you too. Now, be kind to Fuzzy Ball. Warning. This program is not jealous. Dead animals can spread germs. Yeah, sure you're not jealous. Gee. The really lowered her voice. Jelly. Solus interrupted the suit's reply rejecting his voice from the loudspeaker in the room. Very well, D-18. You did your part. I will now relay the faster path to the research area for you and cease the red alert, so that you can take what you were looking for. Now please excuse me, but with the communication station online, I have a nation to conquer. Have a nice day, but please leave the stable as soon as you finish rummaging through the laboratories. Day 11. Time. Approximately 4.30 a.m. Location, Solaris Stable, Big 52, SC Branch. When Puppy appeared from the cave, Molten Gold was sitting in front of a campfire, playing a harmonica. He noticed the foal almost immediately. Getting up and moving towards her, You took your time, didn't you? Did you find the orbs? Puppy smiled merrily and declared, Glass balls! A dozen memory orbs floated out of her saddlebags. Are they enough? Now... Will you tell me where mom is? Please, please, please? The old mummified ghoul waved a hoof. Just a moment. Let me check these, then we'll talk about business. Walton took one of the orbs and nodded, and carefully inspected all the others. Yes, they're good. I think I can. The ghoul froze mid-sentence. Hey, are you carrying a dead parador on your back? The filly in yellow smiled and moved a little, so that the ghoul could take a better look at the dead critter. Do you like her? She's Fuzzy Ball. I've got a pet. I always, always, always wanted a pet. We'll do everything together, like chase butterflies, have slumber parties, teasing the colts, and cooking pancakes. Molten Gold cocked his head. But it's dead. Throw that thing away. What? But Fuzzy Ball's my pet. I can't abandon her. When I find Mom, she'll immediately love her, and it'll be wonderful. Puppy smiled, recalling the deal. Right. Where's my mom? The ghoul snickered. As you wish, little ghost. Yet at your part, I'll do mine. The last time I saw Miss Rainy Days was a couple months after the apocalypse. She was in Ivory Tower, 
organizing the survivors. A ding sound came from the suit, informing Puppy that the primary objective had changed. New destination, Ivory Tower. Objective designated as primary target. Displaying on compass. Yay! A new adventure for Space Captain Andromeda! Bang, boom, straight to the moon! The filly was already running away when the ghoul grabbed her tail. Wait! Ivory Tower is not a place for fools. It's a Steel Ranger outpost nowadays. It's been too hunting. Molten's eyes met puppies and he knew. He saw the hope and that incredible faith that everything was still going to end well. Fuck. How can I tell her that? But when she finds out, it... No. Not your problem, Molten. She asked, you replied. The deal's over. Let her go on her way and don't look back. Ah, uh, Mr. Ugly Gold? Puppy was still waiting for him to finish his sentence. Molten Gold looked away, muttering the last words. Just try not to make them mad. They don't like those like you and me. Good luck, little ghost. Thank you, Mr. Mummy. When I find Mom, I'll tell her that you were nice to me. Bye-bye. The filly merrily trotted away. And throw that dead thing away! It's nauseating! I can't hear you! La la la! Puppy Smiles disappeared behind some rocks, leaving the old ghoul alone with his newfound treasure. Molten Gold sighed and looked back at the orbs, putting them away in his saddlebags. Don't look back, old mummy. Don't look back. Day 11. Time, approximately 7 a.m. Location, north of Ivory Tower, Big 52 SC Branch. Good morning, fillies and gentle colts. This is Lonesome Pony, and you're listening to Radio 52, the only radio that works around these parts. Let me begin this part of the news with a big thanks to all the ponies with a radio transmitter out there that constantly keep me informed about the Big 52. I love you guys. I'd crumble and fall without your help. Every pony listen to this. Radio 52 is blind if you don't tell me what's going on, and I'm the only one who warns ponies about the dangers along the route. The days before, word spreads itself. These radio amateurs are the real guardians of the Big 52. So if you meet them, toss them a good deal. Because if your caravan is in town safe and intact, it could be their merit. And now, the real news. Let's see, what do we have today from the longest route? Seems that after Sun City, Civil War is spreading like a fire along the route. From the last information I got, it seemed some sort of ideological quarrel came all-out war between two factions inside the Steel Rangers. Some Rangers think that they should keep going as protectors of the old tech, while another group thinks they should go out and use the tech to save ponies. The problem is that, at the moment, both factions are mowing lives in their battle. Their technologists and other groups may call themselves after the head of the old ministry, Applejack, are setting an ivory tower on fire. So again, guess what? Avoid ivory tower at all costs. If you don't want to be assaulted and robbed by a group of heavily armed ponies that fight another young useless holy war, I repeat, avoid ivory tower. Go back to Rust Manor, or Broccoli, and wait for the situation to settle down. I heard that Mr. White in Salt Cube City is organizing a company of mercenaries to occupy the area surrounding Sun City, and secure the route from downtown to Rust Manor. Seemingly all for free. I guess this means that the White Apples are aiming at their slice of cake at the newly freed town. I have just one thing to say to Mr. White. Remember that tiny ghost that saved your plot from a mega spell? In that city, there aren't only our ponies, but also foals and ponies that didn't ask for war. So please, do tell your guys to think twice about pulling the trigger. Okie dokie. A dense pillar of smoke rose up from the horizon as the echoes of explosions died in the distance. Puppy trotted merrily, following the pink arrow on our compass, and at last getting her hooves back on 52's asphalt pavement. Deploying her folded scooter, she jumped on and zoomed away towards the next war zone.
Footnote. Level up. 11. New perk added. Stonewall. You are much less likely to be knocked down in combat. Quest perk added. Trotting Nightmare. Rank 2. You've seen the darkness behind the moon. Now you can shape the toxic cloud surrounding you.